Hey guys, Tommy Turtle here, bringing you another Turtle Time. And yes, it is a nice bright video. I got thinking one day about how did we all find the very fandom? I mean, it's obvious we all follow the same social media, so we all have the same favorite shows and movies featuring furry characters. That was obvious we all had the same source, right? Well, he'd be surprised by some of these answers I found. I hit up a couple of Facebook groups and went and talked with my local furry about how did they find the furry fandom. I asked them two questions. The aforementioned, how do you find the furry fandom? And what's something you liked about it? But people didn't answer the second question for some reason. I don't know why. Anywho, let's get into some of these comments, shall we? How did I find it? I found it on here. I knew it existed before. But I never looked into it till I found a link to it here. What's well, something I like about it? Furries are non judgmental of other furries. All colors and creatures, and no one knows who is under the suit, so no one judges by how they look. I didn't find the fandom, it found me. I was looking for Pokemon. TikTok, actually. I like the people and the acceptance. I found it many years ago in a game called Furcadia. I love, love the creativity I get to see and express. Hashtag not sponsored by Fricadia. I found speed paints on YouTube and didn't know what Fursona and OC was, so I googled it. Followed people on YouTube and found DeviantArt back in 2010. It found me, and I'm naturally weird, so I stayed lol. I was into anthro stuff from a very early age, like as soon as I learned to read. I learned about the organized fandom maybe in, well, I was in high school, between the end of my first year, summer 1999, and the start of my final year, fall 2001. I joined up online, never have been to a Furcon, though I did hit up Otacon in 2006 and 7, and met some fursuiters there. Now I have kids, and I'm somewhat more religiously observant and then I used to be the whole tendency of cons to have their best content on Friday and Saturday it becomes an issue as if I'm not staying with an easy walk distance of the con I feel on that I didn't know it was an official fandom till somebody told me about it for Topia I believe that was the name and, and then I fell into VCL and everything else I've denied loving anthropomorphic things for a very long time however I became confident in who I it was, and now here I am. I want to take a quick moment and to say, a lot of furries are closeted, actually. Either they themselves try to deny it, or they're told that it is childish to like anthropomorphic animals, and actually they break away from it to be more quote-unquote adult. But if it's not illegal, and it's not hurting you or anyone else, or anything else, then what's the real harm? Alright, back to it. I saw a YouTube video about a convention, looked like fun, so I created Zona and joined. Initially, I found it as a teenager discovering artists like Jay Naylor and Shinigami Girl, but I don't become a full-on furry until years later after watching Zootopia. Well, I've always liked anthro animals, but I didn't really find the fandom until my 20s when I had a crippling MIVU addiction. And one day, when I was spending entirely too much money on the Avatar store, I had to stumble onto very Avatar items. I merely had to find a raccoon skin. And thus, my first iteration of my persona, Maycoon, was born and I made my way into the furry cartoon and started learning about the fandom and on and off IMVU. That's just adorable. I found out about from Warrior Cast technically. I was always into the series and loved drawing animals, so I casually fell into the art community of people who also like drawing Warrior Cats fan art and animals, including furries. I didn't like them at first, but I slowly grew fond of the style. I can't remember how I found it, but I officially joined because of the furs who dancers on YouTube. Pretty sure I've been a furry all my life. I was halfway there without even knowing it. Joined the MLP fandom because of the art, but then migrated to the furry fandom because of, yes, you guessed it, the art. Trying to write a story back in 2012 and the ideas for a hybrid human tiger. Ghoul it, only to find that there was a whole fandom around that sort of thing. 
After years of fantasizing about anthropomorphic animals, but not knowing the name, I felt I belonged to Wolf. Still haven't written that story yet, which is now supposed to be a backstory for my persona after I found out what I was doing. Found it via an old YouTube video. Something I love is just individual creativity of its members. Alright guys, let's take a second to hear from somebody at the Fur Meet. Join me is Taito. So, how did you find the furry fandom? I found the furry fandom through Poppy Furs on YouTube. And you were just looking Poppy Furs up at random? Um, I found someone interviewing a Poppy Fur. So, there was someone I already watched and they interviewed a furry and I was like, hey, that's pretty cool. I like to perform and all that kind of stuff, so I might check it out. Hmm. And here I am now. <laughs> What's something about the fandom that you like? Um, I really like the fursuit aspect of it. I love performing. I like to make the fursuits. I like to interact with other fursuiters and all that kind of stuff. That's probably my favorite part. Uh, have anything you would like to plug? Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at ollie.collie. Now I'm mistaken with the Alibaba website. Do not go on those. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Kaido. Now back to the comments. eBay. Looking for a Halloween costume and see a suit. Googled what it was and boom. Feel more me in the fandom. Maybe do Discord chats with questions to ask people. I would be happy to chat. Twitter. I was on there at first of last year looking up MLP stuff and stumbled upon fursuit pics. Hmm, I think I've always known it was there since I've been immersed in like internet culture. I also like plenty of furry cartoons and other media without technically joining the fandom for the longest time. I've always been an artist and I drew all sorts from humans to animals to animal stuff before I even knew there was a term for it lol. My ex originally told me about furries but never thought that I'd find any unless I went to a big name con. A couple years later I started going to see my local uh, Pokemon group. They're talking with me about the local generic convention. I found another furry there and the dominoes just started falling in place. I found it through random google searches of cool drawings in the summer of 2017. Of course little me started stealing that art before I knew it was bad. I'm sorry. And then I decided I liked the peculiar style of drawings which led me to the term furry. My favorite thing about the fandom is that it, I, you can be who slash what you want to be a freely. It makes me happy to be who I am now, now that I'm in the fandom. I've been a fairy since I was 14, now 18. I found it through an old webcomic called Concession. Might have to look that up later. The first time I really ever discovered fairies was back when that episode on CSI, where they visit a furry convention, just aired for the first time. I was taught to believe that all furries were just a bunch of people in animal costumes that liked to do the dirty in them. However, the first person that properly introduced me to the fandom made it seem like a ton of fun and helped me understand more about the fandom than what I portrayed it as. But now I'm in the fandom because of the art and the fact it is a very friendly and loving fandom. I found the fandom by complete accident. I was looking for a comic to read and found the House Pets comic. I did some research and that's when I found out about furries. I think the suits people make and thought awesome. I turned back in 2012, but stay clear of it for a bit, and I decided to embrace it. At the time, back in 2018, when I joined the fandom, I was a mascot performer. I was watching mascot highlights on one of my breaks in suit, and that's when I noticed fursuits, and I did some research, and here I am. I have four years of mascotting experience. I found it via an online forum for fans of Disney's One on One Dalmatian, the series, and thus my first persona was a Dalmatian. Also, a few friends of mine was from both school and online, otherwise online to in real life, introduced me to more furry, anthro, and mythological slash mystical concepts, hence my angelic fox kitchen persona. Well, I was a Shane Dawson fan at one point, and I saw his video with, forgive me for saying this, his name, Kiro the Wolf. I think it was technically multiple things, but Fizzy Pop's Die Young video made me want to officially join. One of the things I love about the fandom is the art. There's so many amazing artists out there. College. I made friends with a furry and they introduced me into the fandom. I had a very stereotypical view of the furry fandom before they taught me what it was really about. Loving being part of it now. YouTube animations and deviant art are what led me to the fandom. Here I am almost 11 years later. Was on my way into the city so I didn't have to be home alone with my abusive brother. Was drawing Star Fox art 
when some cute girly guy sat next to me. I was too focused on my art to give him any much attention. He then says it's looking awesome and asked me if I was going to the meet. I was confused but he convinced me to go to the fur meet. And yeah, I've been a fur ever since. I found it through the Brony fandom, which I found through YouTube and Facebook. It wasn't that big of a leap, to be honest. My favorite thing about it is how accepting it is of the LGBT plus people. I joined the fandom, one, because of the art and other reasons are a bit more I was looking for an escape somewhere to fit in and the furry fandom was as it there accepting and many kind furs, to be honest, it's one of the things that helped me through hard times like bullying or other things from home. Thieving art. I drew myself as a wolf throughout high school before as I was even unknown thing. Then when I was into college, I met a girl who introduced me to roleplay. And through a roleplay buddy, I found that the art side and furries and made my first official persona. She was a cringy mess. My entire life, I've been drawing. I got to borrow my father's phone and then he gave me his iPad when he went into prison. I drew him daily things in to mail over. It was always smiling animals. I thought I had a good imagination of combining animals and humans, standing animals, etc. And so one day someone asked me if I was a furry. Keep in mind I was 8 years old and I had no clue what it was. Looked up and got invested. It started from there I'm 18 has been a furry for 10 years. I like drawing. I live off of commissions pretty much nowadays. It's a lot to thank my father for though. Unfortunately, he disagreed to what I'm drawing nowadays, which is NSFW. It's what sells. We cut contacts because it's a major part of it. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I found by protecting it in a pet group. Someone posted their bird related character and were getting bullied. So I didn't truly know about furries. I was ignorantly unaware, but not aggressive about it, like others. But I was learning in the comments and educating myself, and learned that I am 100% a furry lol, acting like an animal as a kid, enjoying animals a lot, making animal characters for fun, but not assigning them to me or anything, just to draw. And yeah, someone from that pet group helped design my first persona. My good friend explained to me what a furry was. A and about the culture. When he was done, I thought to myself, yep, I'm definitely a furry. After that, I made my first persona. Then I made my actual persona, a rat named Simon. And then I made his husband, I guess my husband, a, little, a dragon named Lucas. So I guess my favorite thing, besides furries are cute, making a furry character. You thought people got into the fandom for various means. Maybe it was an ex or significant other that they currently have. It could have been from a video game. It could have been from YouTube, DeviantArt, just random Google searches, anything and everything. No one has the one track path on becoming a furry. I hope this video helped you realize that there's many ways that people find this fandom and there's not a single way that all furries are alike other than like an anthropomorphic animal. Let me know in the comments below how you found this fandom. If you want to find out more about what the furry fandom is, well I'm going to link the video I did in the cards above and description below. If you liked what you saw and want more, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that bell for notifications my next video airs. Leave a like or maybe a comment. Share it with friends, family, other birds you might know. And I hope to see you all next time. Johnny.